Hey everyone, welcome back to Gotcha Interact. In today's video, we're gonna look at Hu Tao's current value, how maybe Natlin has changed her, whether that's been for better or for worse, and just kind of have a discussion here with Vixen on this. So getting right into things, looking at Hu Tao in general, she's a very relatively early character. She came out uh, before 2.0, before Inazuma. So she's been around for a very long time, has had multiple banners. And she's always been a very, very good DPS. She was top tier when she came out and kind of remained top tier for a very long time until probably around the time we had a character like Al Haytham, just kind of thinking off the top of my head. So she just lasted a long time. And even with these better characters like Al Haytham and so forth, you know, we now we have Nivellet, Arlecchino, Navia, Navia is pretty good as well. So there's a lot of other uh, competition, just characters in general. So. And even with all of those characters, Hu Tao has still remained to be a very viable and very powerful option. We've always seen more teammates coming out that she can work with. And speaking of which, that was one of the reasons I wanted to talk about Shilonen. I think Shilonen uh, is, if anything, an upgrade to Hu Tao because Hu Tao can easily use that. And it's just like adding another option to all of these other supports that we were already previously using, uh, like Yelon, Xing Cho. Then Farina came out. Farina is just another option for Hydro application, and she's a good buffer. Zhongli. There's just always been things. And I think Shilonen, if anything, actually just made Hu Tao even better, just because Shilonen is one of the best buffers in the game. So I think Hu Tao's ceiling has risen just a little bit. But Vixen, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think overall, when we had talked about this, uh, my initial thought uh, initially to Hu Tao was when I when I kind of brought up this uh, video idea, we were talking about it, and it was interesting because, you know, obviously Rift, you are the residential, um, you know, Hu Tao main for us. So, um, <laughs> you know, we if have. You say so. Well, you know, uh, Rift has a C a C one R two Hu Tao, whereas I have a C zero R one. So. Certain play styles and whatnot can change varying on that, but just to let you guys know, we have a little bit of kind of actual usability with the character, so we know a lot about her. And then with Nahida on the other end, we're looking at a character who is, you know, uh, Rift you have. Uh, sadly, I do not have, but a very strong character. And I guess when I had originally brought this up, my thought was that Hu Tao is almost kind of falling off. You know, I, I do know that Shilonen has given her some viability and some strengths, just like Hu Tao did back with the plunge team with Shan Yun. Uh, but that is also a high investment type team. Uh, Shilonen at least is like a kind of another Kazuha to throw into the mix. So it's a little bit of a nice kind of buff to have there as a character. But the original reason I kind of brought up Hu Tao was because I was very interested. Because when we look at uh, a certain uh, one of the sites that we'd see for wishing calculations, like what what have people in the world been pulling for right now? Uh, Nahida sit, sitting at 15,000 or just under 15,000. And Hu Tao is sitting just over at 6,000. Uh, so basically what that just goes to tell me is that the people who already want Hu Tao have already got her or they've already got the constellations or you've already got kind of they're already settled or the new people that are coming in as well aren't really wanting you know a lot of new people aren't wanting Hu Tao a lot of people are wanting uh, Nahida over Hu Tao if they had to choose which is obviously evident by the numbers here. But I think overall, when we look at the characters and look at people actually pulling and whatnot, Hu Tao is obviously an older character, but I think that he does have enough reruns as well. But I think looking at these stats, I don't know, it just made me think initially that a lot of people, if they had to think about it nowadays, especially with someone like Arlecchino on the rise as a character who's the second best probably DPS in the game, you know, you start to wonder, is Hu Tao a less of a good pull anymore? Uh, is Because at the end of the day, you have to think about it, right? Uh, Ayato was a good character, or, you know, for instance, Raiden was a good pull, but in terms of DPS, would you, should I pull Raiden or should I pull Nivellet? And I you know I talked about that in the last video of, like, an idea between two characters. Obviously, you know, someone who's newer, if they want to play for content, you're going to pull Nivellet. You're going to pull the best DPS that you can get. So I'm wondering if people are looking at Hu Tao and they're thinking, okay, I want the best Pyro DPS, I want somebody really, really strong. I'm almost wondering if people are wondering, okay, yeah, Hu Tao just kind of needs a little bit more investment, which... It can also be another issue, which we'll talk about in a second. But, you know, Arlecchino doesn't really, you know, she she does a lot of damage without a lot of investment to really get there. So I was kind of interested to think of kind of your thoughts on that rift. Oh, yeah, totally. I think the banner metrics actually do make a lot of sense. And to your point, Arlecchino has a higher floor, 
for uh, investment and dealing damage in a team, whereas Hu Tao has a very low floor. So she needs a lot of work, a lot of investment using the correct characters, but even just her herself, her weapon is very valuable for her. And yeah, you have four star options like Dragon's Bane, uh, Ballad of the Fjords you can even use. There's a few others. Um, but you do get a lot of return on investment if you actually do invest into her. So she has a very low floor, but a very high ceiling. Arlequino ceiling, I would say, is still higher, though. Obviously, you see that in tier list that Arlequino, being one of the best DPSs, is going to do better than Hu Tao. On top of that, though, just being better at similar investment, the fact that she has a higher floor just means that she doesn't need as much to already just be better. Hu Tao just simply needs it. But looking past that, I... Going back to the banner metrics, I think it makes perfect sense because if we look at like even constellations, Nahida C2 is absolutely goaded. I mean, you're enabling a lot of really high damage potential for Dendro teams, almost doubling the damage essentially. And so it's just a massive high value constellation if you like to play your Dendro teams. Hu Tao, it's really just the C1. So it's one less to think about. Um, but like you said, I think that a lot of people already have Hu Tao and are satisfied with it or if also new players are coming in and they're doing their research watching uh, other creators just watching videos in general they're getting the idea that oh who tows not as good as these other options why should i pull that when there's arlequino is even being the same element and everything i'll just pull arlequino it's a lot easier to build probably easier to use and play doesn't actually need constellations whereas who sometimes needs to bank on the C1 uh, for even competing with these better DPSs. So it's just something to think about and why I think the banner metrics for Nihita getting 15,000 as of right now and Hu Tao having 6,000 as of right now, I think that makes a lot of sense when I look at that. So, and I guess kind of going now into the investment of Hu Tao, Vixen, I know you said we talk about that later. So I guess uh, if you want, we can talk about that now. I kind of already talked about it a little bit because of the banner metrics, and I think that's why, but what more specifically were your thoughts, Vixen, on the investment when it comes to Hu Tao? I think the investment is, like you were talking about, that C1 is crucial, and it hurts a lot. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. myself, without the C1, um, I found myself a lot of times, you know, trying to well, want to dash cancel. Uh, it's just a preferred and better way to do things in the game, uh, especially mm -hmm. with Hu Tao, and you need that C1 to do so. But I'm not really a Hu Tao main. I, I guess the whole reason I even have Hu Tao is by accident. Uh, back way back when I think when Yelon either had her first or second banner, uh, and she was running with Hu Tao, I actually had to. I, I was getting Yelon, but then after I got Yelon, I threw a ten pull into the opposite banner because I was like, well, uh, me and Rift both do this. After we get a five star, we just throw another ten pull into the other banner or into the same banner, see if we get an early. I got an early and one Hu Tao, not, you know? like two or three wishes <laughs> later. And it was like, oh, that was, crazy. that was great. Right. And so then I got her weapon. Uh, I would totally agree. Staff of Homa is really, really good. Uh, it's one of the best pole arms that we have in the game. Uh, even still, you know, once again, like you were talking about Rift, it's very old character, old, old character. And so mm -hmm. you're using her for years and that's weapon is still being used on plenty of other characters and probably will still be used on other characters as secondary and third options for a lot of characters in the future. It's even actually mm -hmm. her best weapon yeah, as no well doubt. as Zhongli. So uh, besides that though, right. that C1 I think is just so crucial. The idea behind that C1 is your charge attacks don't use up stamina and it's a very basic constellation, but it means so much to her gameplay. Yeah, totally. Like without her C1 and, and I think a lot of people would look at that and be like, well, it's not like an direct damage increase what do you mean is it more damage and it's what it's doing though is helping you get more charged attacks in so your overall dps per rotation goes up by quite a bit i think um and i'm just going to be spewing out numbers so don't like hold to this but i think it's something like a 40 percent damage increase overall you can look at actual theory crafters for that information because we're definitely not like gonna do all of that but it's a and that's a substantial increase i mean the right in c2 is something of a similar increase i think it's like 48 percent total damage increase it, that those are massive increases so to not have the c1 for hu tao is a loss of damage because you're not getting in as many charge attacks because you're right it isn't an actual number increase to the charge attacks the charge attacks are going to look exactly the same but you're going to be able to get three or four more of them per rotation which if you're hitting and you have your you know hu tao built really really well if you're hitting 90k 100k or even more than that based on the team that's three to four hundred thousand damage loss in a rotation 
in a constellation, right? So it's a very good constellation and it does make her gameplay a little bit more fluid, a little bit more fun because you can afford to dash cancel instead of jump canceling if you have the C0, which isn't bad if you do like a Shanyun team, which is why I talk about that sometimes because it's a really fun team if you do have the C0 because the C1 doesn't matter if you're using Hu Tao with Xiang Yun because you're going to be jumping anyways. You just use the jump cancel instead to go right into a plunge and it's just a lot of fun. But it is something to think about, right, with investment. And once again, just why I think it makes sense that the banner metrics are the way they are. Now, looking ahead, looking to the future, now that we're here in Natlin, like I said, number one, Shilonen, I think, was an upgrade to Hu Tao, like looking only at Hu Tao, not comparing her with other characters. Her ceiling, I think, got a little bit higher just because Shilonen's that cracked. So you, there's another option to use as a support for her. And looking ahead, I don't know if there would be other characters that would come out that would buff Hu Tao or make her better. I mean, because when we look at her teams already, if we throw Shilonen in there, Yelon, and Farina, that's kind of hard to replace if I'm being completely honest. You've already got your Hydro Resonance going for you. It'd have to be like a character that replaces Yelon or replaces Farina. But like... Who's going to be better than Farina? Who's going to be better than Shilonen? Yelon's already pretty stinking good. So, like, I feel like we've gotten to the point with Hu Tao where we're already seeing at the most that we can probably ever see in a Hu Tao. It's going to be difficult to actually see how she could get better. Now, maybe a Melt team might actually become viable with Sneznaya with some crazy off-field cryo application. Because really, I think the only reason that Melt teams wouldn't be used as much for your Pyro characters is because... It doesn't apply as well as what we have in Hydro. And I think that's the main difference. But who knows? Maybe that could come out. And I think that's how Hu Tao would probably get better at that point. Because at this point right now, we're already seeing, I think, as much as we'll ever see unless that happens. Yeah, I totally agree. I think overall, to get a better Hu Tao, I was actually going to say that you would need a straight up melt team. And only then would that actually be <laughs> yeah. worth it. Which we're not going to see most likely until Snezhnia. Um, until that point, it doesn't seem like anything's going to be really there. And I'm sure that you can try to do some sort of team, uh, but you really need to have consistent and fast applying cryo. You basically need Yelan, Xing Cho mm. cryo versions to kind of be useful right. <laughs> to actually do this. And I think, honestly, that'd actually be kind of mm. cool now to think about that. But overall, I think like that's kind of the idea. And I think that's the whole point, though, that they don't have that is because... I believe Hydro on top of Pyro does more damage than Pyro on top of Hydro. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we haven't seen a Cryo fast applier because characters like Yoimiya, Arlecchino, Arlecchino, my C2 Arlecchino, very highly invested. But still, I mean, I'm hitting hundred, almost 200k, sometimes over 200k on my normal attacks. If you now melt that damage hit, you're seeing skyrocketing numbers. That's insane. So as you, yeah, exactly. So as you're seeing that, it's a little bit more like, it becomes a little bit more real. So I think overall, when we talk about this, uh, I would love to see that actually with Hu Tao especially. Uh, but I do think one of the best mm -hmm. teams that we're going to get right now is going to be that plunge team. For me right now, I have the most fun in that plunge team with the Farina, the Shan Yun. Uh, you know, just having that fun combo team. Uh, I'm excited to I actually haven't done it mm -hmm. with uh, Shilonen. I'm excited to try that. So there's a lot of cool, interesting things that I think you can do with Hu Tao. I'm just almost wondering how exactly... I'm trying to figure out how to do it right now. And I think every single time that it's going to come up of Hu Tao, or should I just use my Arlecchino, it's just going to be use the Arlecchino 9 times out of 10, unless you just really want to use your right, Hu Tao. Right. Exactly. And that, and that makes sense for you because you have the C0 Hu Tao, and then when you look at your Arlecchino at C2 and everything, it's just like, it's kind of obvious. Like, <laughs> if I need the power, I'm just going to use Arlecchino and I have all the supports I need for that. And exactly. Everything. So I totally understand that. Whereas me, like, I don't have Arlecchino. Hu Tao is my only limited pyro character. So when I need a pyro DPS, I don't have an option. But I'm okay with it because I just, I love my Hu Tao. She's one of my favorite characters. Vixen knows this. And so, you know, I have a lot of fun with it. And so I think that pretty much covers everything for just talking about Hu Tao. I think at the end of the day, she's still an amazing character. Like she's definitely on, you know, DPS charts and everything. She clears content. She's, if not top five, she's number six or seven. So, and, and she clears the abyss pretty consistently still for me. 
Uh, she actually, I used her in this pretty hard event and she was the character, she was the only character I actually had in her teams to actually clear some of this event stuff. Whereas my Nouvellet Farina combo was actually not able to do it, which I found very interesting. Yeah, I definitely think this past event was a lot. But uh, if you guys want to, speaking of which, if you guys want to go check out that event uh, and know our thoughts on it, go ahead and check the video on that as well. But basically, yeah, like Riff said, that's all that really has to say about Hu Tao. I mean, I, th I would like to think that hopefully she could get better in the future, but she's just been kind of, in my personal opinion, getting, been getting pegged just down on the leaderboards. Uh, obviously, like you said, it's still a top 10 DPS easy. Uh, but I do think that um, constellations, weapons, a lot of investment teams as well. If you don't have the C1, you might you still need Farina and Sean Yoon. That at that point, you might as well just get the C1. There's so many questions. There's so many ideas to go with her as a character. I do think it's a lot to think about. But I do think that overall, she is a good character. And so if you do use her, she's going to obviously do extremely well for you as she has for you, Rift. Well, that's everything we've got talking about Hutel in this video, though. If you guys did like the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Check out our Discord as well. And thank you guys for watching the video. We'll see you guys in the next one.